this lesson, we're going to look at specific examples of electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions of benzene. And keep in mind that electrophilic aromatic substitution is this general reaction type where an electrophile engages with the aromatic ring, and the aromatic ring behaves as a nucleophile, or Lewis base. In the first step, two of the pi electrons in the aromatic ring are donated to what we call the active electrophile E+, and this is an A sub E, or association of an electrophile to a pi system elementary step. This creates a non-aromatic intermediate with positive charge and this intermediate reacts with a Bronsted base typically generated in the same process that generates E plus to re-establish aromaticity and give us a substituted aromatic product. The diversity of electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions comes from the scope of the electrophile E plus. A variety of different active electrophiles participate in this reaction. And this leads ultimately to different types of substituted benzenes. And so electrophilic aromatic substitution is a highly versatile method for preparing substituted aromatic compounds from unsubstituted aromatic compounds. The first example we're going to look at of electrophilic aromatic substitution is the halogenation of benzene, which is accomplished using the elemental halogen reagent X2, where X is Br or Cl, and AlCl3, which is a Lewis acidic promoter of this reaction. We can see that AlCl3 is Lewis acidic by looking at its Lewis structure and recognizing that the central aluminum atom only has six total electrons. Aluminum is in group 13, and so like all group 13 elements, such as boron, when the atom is neutral in a Lewis structure, it's going to be electron deficient. The aluminum atom lacks a full octet of electrons. The Lewis acidity of AlCl3 is critical because it helps create the strong electrophile that ultimately reacts with benzene. It engages with X2 to create an electrophile that's reactive enough to react with benzene, a relatively weak nucleophile. This leads ultimately, through the classical EAS mechanism, to a halobenzene, a halogen-substituted benzene. And at this point, we really want to focus our attention on how the active electrophile is generated and the nature of the active electrophile. That comes down to a reaction between these two reagents before the aromatic ever actually gets involved. So let's take a look at that. Here are two examples of halogenation of benzene using Cl2 and Br2 together with the Lewis acidic promoter AlCl3. How exactly is the active electrophile generated? Well, it actually involves a simple Lewis acid base complexation between the halogen and AlCl3. Let's work with the chlorination example involving Cl2. We've already outlined the reasons why AlCl3 is a good Lewis acid, but it's perhaps a little bit less intuitive why Cl2 is a good Lewis base. Don't forget that the chlorine atoms have lone pairs, and these lone pairs are capable of being donated to a Lewis acidic center. And so, through electron flow like this, which according to our nomenclature would be an A sub N or association of a nucleophile to an electron deficient atom step, we end up with the Lewis acid Lewis base complex, where one of the chlorine atoms, a Lewis base, has donated a pair of electrons and become positively charged to the aluminum atom, which now in accepting the pair of electrons is now negatively charged with four bonds total and four formal electrons. From the curved arrow alone, we can recognize the Cl2 acting as a Lewis base in this context and the AlCl3 in accepting the electron pair acting as a Lewis acid. The resulting complex that's formed, which I'm boxing here in blue, is the active electrophile, meaning the actual species that engages with the aromatic ring in halogenations of aromatics. The steps that follow are the classic steps of electrophilic aromatic substitution, association of the electrophile to the benzene ring followed by loss of a proton. One way to think about this active electrophile is as a chlorine atom connected to something that's a good leaving group due to the positive charge of the chlorine involved in the actual complex. And so through electron flow that looks like association of elect an electrophile to the aromatic ring and SN2 at the electrophilic chlorine atom, at this chlorine here, we end up with the key sigma complex in which the carbon-chlorine bond has been formed, there's positive charge within the ring, and we've destroyed aromaticity due to the creation of a new sp3 hybridized carbon. This step also generates an anion, the AlCl4- anion. And this anion is actually basic enough to deprotonate this extremely acidic non-aromatic cation because the deprotonation restores aromaticity. In fact, that proton transfer is so favorable that it can generate HCl. 
The final product we end up with is the substituted chlorobenzene, and the byproducts are AlCl3, which can then go on and catalyze another round of halogenation, and HCl, showing just how favorable the restoration of aromaticity is. It's so favorable that we've generated a strong acid in the course of the proton transfer that created the HCl. That's favorable overall because of the large stability we get from the creation of aromaticity in the product. One final point that's worth making about halogenation that's something you should think about when looking at EAS reactions in general is that the product is now capable of undergoing EAS again. And so the question of whether the product will want to continue to react with, for example, Cl2 and AlCl3 left in the reaction mixture is an important one. If the product is activated toward further substitution, then it will do so, and we might end up with, for example, polychlorinated products with new chlorines coming in in at the ortho and para positions relative to where the first chlorine comes in. However, what we find in halogenations, for a reason that is going to make total sense, is that after a single halogenation event, the reaction stops. What's the reason for that? Well, the substituent that we added on is electron withdrawing overall. Chlorine and bromine are both electron withdrawing groups. And so, relative to the starting material, relative to benzene, the product is electron deficient. That means it's less reactive in EAS reactions, and this won't react further to put more chlorines on the ring. That's a good thing. That means that we can selectively create monohalobenzenes without worrying about multiple substitutions taking place. This isn't always the case, as we'll see in later examples.